Well, hey, good uh, good Tuesday morning, everybody. This is Dave coming to you for a fireside chat here in the Wyoming house. It is about 11 a.m. on Tuesday morning. As always, the Wyoming Meerschaum, which is being stubborn as hell, getting this part to color up. I'm smoking an old friend this morning. Mississippi Mud. Mississippi Mud's one of my OGs. It and uh, Early Morning Pipe were two of my earliest favorites. They might have been my first and second favorite. So I kind of feel like it's running home to mom when I, uh, when I do that, when I go back to these guys. So let's see, it's right about freezing here today. We had a beautiful day yesterday. Hit 50, sunny. I mean, it was beautiful. In fact, I took Sasha out for a long romp on the creek. So we got a little bit of talk about that in a minute. We've got a couple of clips coming up from that. It's supposed to snow today. And in fact, we got a little light snow going on right now as I speak. In fact, I'll turn you around and show you the light snow and then we'll come right back. There you go. You can see a little bit of light snow coming down. I'm supposed to do that for the next three, four, or five hours. I don't think we're supposed to get a lot of snow today, but you know, winter is definitely one. It is in control here for, for good. Um, you know, it's going to be winter here until at least April, if not May. But it sure does look pretty. A bunch of you have been asking how Sasha doing and if the coyotes come back a second time, um, and they haven't. Um, in fact, we haven't seen a coyote in the property since that day where I showed you. They came back kind of hunting her. but So the simple answer is no, they've not come back. But Sasha's always on the watch. So um, I'm going to show you what she does. It's pretty funny. All right, here's Sasha. We're looking for coyote. Nice to be able to leave the door open right now. It's not too cold out. And she loves like that half in, half out look. I think it makes her feel safe while she looks for uh, critters. So yesterday's romp on the creek was pretty fun. It was a beautiful day. Like I said, it was warm. It was one of those days where with the sun beating on you, it felt warmer than it actually was. So <clears throat> took took Sasha for a long romp. But I got a couple of videos that are different than what I normally do when I go out there. And the first one... Because I wanted to show you what keeps, what do the moose eat during the wintertime? Because they don't hibernate. They're out all, all winter long, not only for themselves, but for their calves. And so what do they eat? And so I did a quick video here to show you how the moose stay alive from about now all the way into mid-April or the end of April. Because I thought I'd show you this. This is a willow up close. You can see the the lighter yellowish bark, and then you see a little bit of a reddish tint on the bark. That's what keeps the moose alive from now until about April or May next year. I'm going to show you. You can see a lot better when you're zoomed in, but kind of far away. You can see it all along there. See that reddish? That's all willow. Kind of new growth. And you can just see it's everywhere. It's all along here. And this is what the moose eat all winter long. The willow sprigs. I mean, I keep going, but you get the point. You can kind of see how thick they get. <clears throat> they can actually hide in there. It's tall enough for a moose to get in there. You might not even see it. But anyway, there's a stupid little wilderness fact for you. Here's another good stand of willow. You can really see the colors here. I want to see how thick it is. You can't even see through it. That's what keeps the moose alive all winter long. So the other thing I wanted to show you was what does snow do out here? Because it's out, it's out from now on. It'll be snow on the ground from now until probably May. I don't think we'll... We haven't melted off completely 
before mid-May in, in years, and sometimes it's even the first or second week of June. So snow doesn't really melt here. Snow evaporates, and it leaves some pretty cool-looking uh, crystals. So I wanted to take a minute, and that was the other video I caught from yesterday's walk, was what does snow like look like after it's been here for a week and it's really done its evaporating versus melt? So I'm going to do a quick, quick video here, and then we'll come back. I'll have to see if this comes out, but... Snow doesn't really melt here, it evaporates, and it makes these super cool crystals. And they reflect the sunlight really well. So this is what evaporating snow looks like. And with Sasha running through it. So guys, this is where the nice part of the video ends. There's no tobacco, no pipe, no cigar stuff after this. In fact, we're going to head into politics. I've been waiting a week to talk politics. So if you don't have any interest in listening to some pipe idiot speak about politics, now is a good time to click off and uh, move on and watch whatever videos you're going to watch. Stop watching now if you don't want to hear about politics. If you're still here. This is your last warning. Get off of this video if you don't want to hear about politics, please. That's all I'm going with next. So the rest of this video will be just about politics, and then it's going to end. I'm not, not putting any videos or pictures or anything else. So if you don't want to talk politics, have a good day, everybody. All right. So I'm an unabashed conservative. At best, I'm right of center. I'm happy with where the elections have come out and where they seem to be heading. I think our country spoke pretty clearly that they're, the country is just going in the wrong direction, that the world is tired of clown world. And they'd like to see us move a little bit, move back towards normal. I mean, Trump clearly has won. The election has been declared. Um, his opponent gave her concession speech. And he's moving quickly to build his government. I thought it was an interesting comment when Trump got on and said, hey, last time I didn't think I'd win and I didn't know how to govern. And that is not true this time. So... I think he's being much more intelligent on his appointment picks, the cabinet, and all that. I also think he's gonna he's starting to work with the House and Senate leadership to put together an agenda that has a chance of going through. So them, I, I'm pretty excited about it. There's some buts that come with that, though. Let's talk about the Senate first. It looks like the Republicans are going to have a three-seat majority. Um, there's a few seats that still haven't been called, but it looks like we'll have 53-seat majority. So that's a three-seat majority. And then since J.D. Vance is the vice president, we have the uh, tie-breaking vote with the vice president comes in. And um, you know, officially, the vice president is the president of the Senate. And... He will cast any, if, if there's any 50-50 votes, he'll come in and cast. So that's a three-seat majority and a tie-breaking vote. So that's pretty good. But um, I just want to point out that <clears throat> a three-seat majority, which is great. I'm glad we took the Senate. I, I mean, that's huge. Um, but we have, we have some rhinos, you know, Republican name only. We have some rhinos in the Senate that we, we, we really need to be aware of. There's four that scare me. Uh, John Thune out of South Dakota, John Cornyn out of Texas, um, Susan, I can't remember her last name, out of Maine, and Lisa Murkowski out of, out of Alaska. So those are, unfortunately, there's four rhinos, and we have a three-seat majority. So if the, if the rhinos choose to decide with the other, with the other side on appointments, or legislative agendas they could 
put this put a stop on Trump's agenda. So just, I, just, I mean, it feels good. I mean, we're week out. I wanted to wait a week. I wanted to see if the Senate got called. I wanted to see if the House got called. And before I talked like this, so <clears throat> still pretty excited. I think the euphoria is going to start wearing off. And um, we just need to realize that although it's gone the right way, if four rhinos are more than, I'm sure there's more than I'm aware of, but those are the four I, Susan Collins, by the way. Um, if, if those four in the other side with the other side of the agenda, appointments could be halted. And so that means the cabinet that Trump might want might not occur. Um, I believe there are going to be two, possibly two Supreme Court court appointments in this term um not because it's not going to it's not going to sway the court more towards the conservative side but i think we have two conservatives who are going to probably step down due to age thomas and alito they're 76 and 74 and uh, it would be nice if trump could point appoint a 20 25 year younger person into those two seats and cement those seats for the next 30 years um so that matters. That's why the Senate makeup um, is important. And we got to keep the rhinos on our side. Because um, although we have the tie-breaking vote with the vice president, four votes swing and it's not a tie any longer. So I just think that's important to keep in mind as we go through these next uh, three, four months. So let's talk about the House now. The House has not officially been called. I just did a bunch of research the last hour just to get ready for the video, and there's still something like 11 seats that haven't been um, have not been declared yet. Now it does appear the Republicans certainly believe that we're going to keep the House, right? The Speaker just came out this morning and kind of did a victory speech, victory lap on the steps of the Capitol, and they're saying we should have anywhere from. 221 to 222 or 223 seats. We need 218 to control the the agenda in Congress. So, you know, it looks like we're going to do that. It looks like we're going to retain the House. We've got the Senate. We have the President and Vice Presidency. So it's pretty good. But we must watch these 11 seats because if they go wrong, we could actually lose the House still. So that's, you know, I mean, and if you look at... <clears throat> Of the 11 seats that have been called, some of them only have 70% of votes reporting, 75% of votes reporting, 80% of votes reporting, seven days after the election. I mean, I don't really understand it, but, you know, I just, um, I try to list them out. Arizona 6th, I think, is still out. California still has eight seats out, I believe. Um, Iowa, Maine, Ohio, Oregon, and Washington, I think all have seats out. So, we have to be careful and stay vigilant while we watch these. Each seat that gets announced, we have to pay attention to. I don't think we're, we'll lose the House. I mean, I believe we will. But again, we have a rhino problem. You know, we're going to have, let's let's say best case, we get 223. You know, that means we're only about five, six rhinos swinging to the other side in the legislative agenda could be stalled or stopped in its tracks. So I just, I only say these things to make sure that as we experience the euphoria of kind of America saying, hey, we're tired of clown world, we have to be careful. You know, the elites have not, or have not lost control yet. We have not taken this new Senate or the new House for a spin yet, and we won't. They won't seat until like June, I think it's January 20th, Inauguration Day. You know, take a few weeks or a month or two to figure out where where are these new legislative bodies? Are they on board, or do we have enough rhinos swaps that they'll completely stop the agenda? So that's just something to be aware of. I certainly hope that doesn't happen. I hope Trump gets to build the cabinet he wants to build. I hope his legislative agenda gets passed. I hate to see. I'm a little bit tired of watching America be governed by executive order. Because because of what you're going to see on January 20th, Trump will probably sign, you know, they're saying something like 500 executive orders on the first day, completely undoing Biden's executive orders. Well, guess what's going to happen in a few years if we lose the White House? Same thing. So if we can't turn these executive orders that Trump wants to issue, 
in the legislative past legislation and put them in the law of the United States. And we stand at risk of, you know, taking a break, but not really changing the way we're governed. It's the other thing in my life, you know, at 60, I've watched both in business and in politics and in our in the country, I've seen, I've seen what I, you know, you often hear in politics, but it's a word I use a lot, is the swinging pendulum. And usually the pendulum swings to the other direction as far as it did in the other direction. And what I mean is, you know, Reagan was a fairly moderate president and the pendulum swung a little bit. But then, um, but then he, you know, we got um, Bush and it swung a little further right. So it had momentum to swing back when Clinton got in. Now, Clinton was more of a moderate as well. And I don't agree with a lot of what he did, but he was a fairly moderate Democratic president. Um, <clears throat> But we've seen some crazy shit since then. You know, Bush 2, we went way right. And then Obama brought it way left. And then Trump brought, brought pretty way right. And then Biden brought it way left again. And so <clears throat> I just I bring that up only because we essentially have a two-year window. You know, midterm elections generally go against the sitting president. And so... We have very few seats need to be lost in the House and the Senate for us to lose one or either or both of those uh, um, governing bodies in the midterm in two years. So I'm hoping that we can behave in such a way that we don't lose the center Democrats and the independent voters and the independent thinkers and the people who took a risk in their mind, not in mine, but in their mind they took a risk Voting for Trump, a lot of them probably did, though. I'm voting for the less lesser of the two evils. We need to retain those voters in how we talk and how we behave and how we legislate. Otherwise, we're going to lose we're going to lose everything in two years, and we'll have a two year stalemate, which will just really set fire to a Democratic candidate. Now, I sure hope that we do that, and we can retain the House and the Senate, and we send up J.D. Vance become the next president for two terms. Um, but we live in a world of a swinging pendulum. And we just need to be aware that while the pendulum swings right for us, we need to manage the pendulum while it's on the right so we don't just freak everybody out and immediately start saying it to the left again. <clears throat> I know it's not a great talk for a lot of you guys to watch. A lot of you are way right, way conservative, way right wing. But um, I think that's dangerous to think it's going to stay this way if we don't behave appropriately. Um, I also hope <clears throat> Trump has the best Secret Service detail in the history of the United States. And I hope he retains a private personal protection detail as well because I do think, uh, what are we seeing, three or four attempts now, one real, and then the last, the last three have been discovered and foiled. Um, but I don't think we've seen the last one. I think until he leaves office, <clears throat> there will be continued attempts. So I sure hope it doesn't happen, and I sure hope he is as aware and ready as, as he can be to be safe and continue to lead the nation all the way through his term. All right, enough of the neutral talk. Um, I'm really pleased with what I'm hearing coming out of Trump's mouth over the last four or five days. I think it's talking about getting control of our border. I think that seems to be his number one agenda, and I couldn't agree more. Um, the de uh, deportation of the illegals that have poured over the border, I think that's critical. Um, the appointment of Tom Homan as our borders are, and listening to Tom Homan's testimony over the last several years, um, you know, I think he's the perfect man for the job at this point. What he is saying makes sense to me. Um, I like the idea of if schools continue to teach sexual choice by children without parent, parental involvement, he's going to defund those school systems. <clears throat> I think that's brilliant. You know, they have the choice to do that if they wish, but they'll do it without the support of national funds. So that could mean even at the state level because the federal government gives a lot of its money to state school systems. <clears throat> and so it'll put pressure on state school systems to not be defunded, causing them to put pressure on the school districts in their state 
to stop doing this completely insane conversation about sexual assignment. If someone has changed their sexual assignment after they're 18, after they're done with high school, that's fine. But to have it taught in our schools is insanity. And for him to attack it directly and in such an effective manner, I'm hoping he is allowed to do that by the Senate or by the Congress, actually. I don't know if he's going to actually do it, but I like Trump's conversation about creating a Bitcoin strategic reserve. Um, I think buying it in today's world over the next year or two will give the country another very stable and valuable uh, asset to base our economy upon. So, you know, we, we, we're supposed to be basing it on gold. We're supposed to be basing it on assets like Bitcoin. So I think I love that concept. And um, I hope he can get our budget under control. I mean, I don't think he can do much about our debt, but I think he can do a lot about our deficits. I'm hoping he can show some financial responsibility over the next four years. Anyway, I'm very excited about what I'm hearing. I'm hoping some of that can turn into reality. All right, guys, this is going to be it. That's enough politics. I don't like to rant and rave about it. I just wanted to get out and speak my mind about it and let you know what I was thinking and give you some things to think about as the euphoria wears off. We're coming to the end of our Wyoming trip. Uh, Sunday was seven weeks. Um, we have five days after today. We leave Monday morning. Sa Sasha and I leave early. We'll be out here 5 a.m. Monday morning and uh, heading to Denver. Spend a day or two with my boy, Sean, and then uh, pick up Ranger. And Sasha and Ranger and I will then spend Tuesday, Wednesday getting home to Maryland. So I don't know if I'll do a, but it's like a 30-hour trip from Denver to, to Maryland. I don't know if I'll do it in one swipe. Or if we'll stop in St. Louis and spend one night kind of in a shithole, the Fairfield Inn and right off the freeway. Um, or not, not sure. I probably won't make that call till we're on the road. Depends on how I feel. I'd like to push through. Um, you know, the six, seven hour stop, if I don't need it, is uh, just gets me home seven hours earlier. We've got a huge snow front coming in for the center of the country. I'd like to run ahead of that because um, that would really change the trip. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you're having a good Tuesday. I hope you had a great three-day weekend. I um, hope you got a good week in front of you, and we will talk to you probably tomorrow. Bye, you guys.